for a while so this is going to be episode 3 uh, it's going to be quite a short video and it's just an update of what I've been doing and also I'm going to do a review on the Dewalt track saw that I got and the reason why I'm doing a review on the track saw is um, Alistair Johnson from Freebird Interiors um, done a review on the Makita versus the Fez Tool track saw and also Peter Miller done one on the Fell track saw as well and I know we had a few questions asking about the Dewar track saw well they haven't got any so Alice has asked me if I could do a small review and then I will tag them in on it and put a link in the description below of their pages and, and their review as well so I'm doing a little review on that today and uh, and also I'm going to be doing another video very soon on how I build the radiant cover so stay tuned for that as well <laughs> So the reason why I've got these two items in, in the shot is these are my new tools. So I just want to give you an update on what I've been doing and I've been buying some new tools. So this is the Greco LS Coder sprayer I bought recently and I also bought a tabletop edge bander as well. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram, uh, you've been seeing these in my posts but I just wanted to show you guys as well on YouTube of, um, on my, my thoughts on them so far. Okay, firstly, I have two track saws. One is a 240 volt one that I keep in a workshop, and this one is the cordless flex volt 54 volt uh, track saw that I keep in the van. So when I'm on jobs, this one comes out and this one stays in the workshop. I think it is very important that you have two lots of kits. Obviously, you know, money depends on if you can afford them, but it does save a lot of time and a lot of effort you have in. Uh, basically two of everything if you've got a workshop so then you're not emptying the van out when you're in the workshop and vice versa you're not emptying the workshop to go into the van uh, obviously that does get expensive but it won't happen overnight but i have luckily built up um over a, a period of time of having basically two of everything and it does save me a lot of time so this this one is the 240 version this is very very powerful um compared to the 54 volt one but I would say that the cordless 54 volt one is actually more powerful than a 110 version. I used to have a 110 version because in the UK and on sites you need 110 power. Um, but this has actually got more power than the 110 version, which is amazing. Um, I got a six amp hour, amp hour battery in this, which um, relates to only two amp in a 54 volt tool. Because it's flex volt, it means that it's six amp in an 18 volt tool but only a two amp in a 54 volt tool. But I've got four of these batteries and, and you know, I would like some more batteries, but uh, I never see myself I'm running out of power before the other one is charged. As long as you got one on the charger, then you'd be fine. Um, another thing I got mentioned is I got a few tracks. I got a 2.6 meter track. I got a 1.5 meter track and I also bought another 1.5 meter track and I cut it down an 800 piece and then I got a 700 mil piece as well um, for site work. So an 800 mil piece is great for cutting worktops and doors and stuff. And then the 700 mil piece stays in the workshop and that's for doing like bookcases, cutting down the bookcases and stuff is only like 400 mil, which is which is nice to have. Um, the rails are quite cheap to be honest. I think you can get a 1.5 meter track for about 50 pound. Uh, I was very lucky with the 2.6 meter track and I paid £100 from Screwfix a few years ago. Uh, but I think they have gone up slightly now with about 130 But I still think it's great value compared to the Fez tool, which I think is, is £300. Don't quote me on that, but I, I know it's a lot of money. So the Dewar tracks are a lot cheaper than the Fez tool and the Marfell and the Bosch. Uh, not quite sure about the Makita ones, to be honest. I've never really looked at the price, but I'm sure you guys can uh, comment below and tell me if I'm right or wrong in that respect. Um, so I'm gonna do a close up now of the saw so I'm gonna spin the camera around. Here's the two saws next to each other, close up. Uh, if you have the cordless saw, you will recognize that this looks a bit different. This is one of the very early models and I was very lucky to have it off Dewalt um, to test out through a friend of mine. Um, so this is like a darker grey now and it's got all the proper stickers on it and stuff so um, that's why it looks like that but it works exactly the same as the finished product. 
and this one is again it's an earlier model of the finished product because it hasn't got the airlock system on it uh, which you know again uh, I was very fortunate that a friend actually gave me this uh, a Julian Collins gave me this so I was very lucky to have that off him um, so here's the saws uh, next to each other like I said they're practically identical obviously that one has got the battery on it and the handle molding the grip is a little bit different on that one uh, but other than that, they work exactly the same. I, I love this airlock system. I don't know if you guys are aware of it. Um, but when you're attaching the disc extractor to it, it actually, if you're using the Dewalt one, it actually clips on and locks in place rather than just a, a slot that you just push in. It's a friction fit. So I do really like the Dewalt disc extraction, uh, how it connects to the saw. The Dewalt disc extractors, on the other hand, are not the best. But the way they connect them is fantastic. It is quite difficult to give a review on the saw that um, I've been using since 2007 because I don't know any difference to be honest. I've never had another uh, uh, punch saw than the Dewalt one. Uh, I have used the TS55, the first two one a few times, but it, it feels really awkward to use it because I'm just so used to the Dewalt one. And I can imagine if someone started using the Dewalt one, they find it awkward too, because uh, it is an actual different uh, action on it. So the, so the first two one, uh, it pivots down from the back well, as the Dewalt one, it actually pivots all the way because it plunges down. So it the whole saw moves down, which I think is better um, because it's in the wrist. Because with the, the Fez 2 one, you're actually using your wrist to punch down. So it could be quite painful on your wrist, I can imagine. Might be wrong. But with this one, you're actually using your full arm movement to push it down, which I think is a lot better. But again because I've never really used any other saw. I'm just so used to this one, I don't know any different. Um, another good point about the Dewalt saw is these can actually run on the Fez 2 tracks. Um, it can't run on the Makita ones, but it can run on the Fez 2 ones. Um, and, but the Fez 2 ones can't run on the Dewalt tracks. And it's a shame because if the Dewalt tracks are a lot cheaper, so if you wanted to save yourself money and wanted the Fez 2 saw, you could run on the Dewalt tracks. Um, I have heard some negative points on the Dewalt tracks and saying they're not as good as the first two ones. But again, because I've never had the first two ones, I can't really comment on that. The only thing I have noticed is on this 2.6 meter track, and I have spoken a few times on Instagram about this, is that sometimes there's a deflection in the cut. So in the centre, from end to end, is normally about one or two mil out sometimes. So I don't know if it is a bit of bit of movement in this, this track uh, right, but I have noticed it a few times but not every time because I you know I try to check all my pieces quite regular and it doesn't happen all the time only some of the time so I don't know what why maybe it's something I'm doing um, but yeah it's um I'm really happy with them I've never had any problems like I said I've been using these saws since 2007 um, and I couldn't I've never been in a you know position or ever thought I need to get a better punch saw. So if you are a Dewalt fan or you're trying to save some money on the tracks, maybe this is a good option for you. Um, it, it said it quite. I can't compare it with anything because I got nothing else to compare it with. So I hope I hope you guys have found this um, video useful, and I will just put in some a few little shots now. We'll be using the saws and the cut this given. Just made a cut there with the 240 volt track saw and like i said it's a it's a very good cut i know this is only mdf but uh, i use it on mfc and all other sort of material and never had any problem with cut the blade i use is the craft pro blade this is a 48 tooth blade um these are meant for track saws um i think these give a really nice cut and for the price sometimes you can get them on sale on amazon for about 16 pounds when they had that price i normally buy a few of them like i said they're throwaway blade but they give a really nice good cut and they they're really really cheap so that last blade is in the track saw at the moment said if you don't know much about the track saw um you just clamp the rail using these clamps that you also get from dewalt and all the other companies do them 
and that just goes up tight against the workpiece. I took a bit longer than I thought. <laughs> uh, on the mark you want to cut, and then obviously the saw then runs on the, on the track, and then you punch down and you you make you cut, and it cuts lovely. And because of the rubber that is so close to the edge, it stops any chip out, um, which which is what you want on pre-finished material like MFC or even veneer boards. Uh, and like if you're cutting down doors and stuff at home. Uh, it's perfect for that as well. In my opinion, every carpenter should have a track saw. It's, um, you know, they are a game changer. It makes such a big difference. Like I said, I've had it since 2007, and it's, it's changed the way how, how I work and made my my work a lot better for that. Now I've got a 54-volt cordless saw on the track, and I'm just going to make another cut now. So maybe you can hear the difference in power, and I'll show you the quality of cut as well. the 54 volt cordless saw and as you can see the cut is great again the only difference is is as you can see it's it's a little bit off the rubber by a few mil by probably about a mil and a half and that's because in the cordless saw i got a thinner curved blade so in the corded version i think it's a, a 2.7 or 3 mil curved blade and in the cordless it's a thinner curved blade so it's like a 1.7 mil curve um, the reason is you should use a thinner curve in a cordless. It's just it's less pressure on the motor because it is cordless, and the runtime on the battery will be better as well. The only thing that does happen is you do have more flex in the blade. So if a blade is under pressure or it's running a bit too slow, the blade might wobble slightly. And that, again, that have uh, happened a few times, but on MDF, um, it's 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 never been a problem to me. Uh, in the cordless saw, let me just um, see if I can get a blade on top. Um, I use these blades, and it's the Dewalt ones for the track saw. Try and open it up. It's these blades. Uh, again, you can get these really cheap. I think they're about 20 quid, and I have had them slightly cheaper on eBay for about 18 pounds. And it's uh, these are the 42 tooth. Our lock laser curve is 1.93 curve uh, millimeters, so it's slightly smaller, slightly thinner, but really, really sharp. Um, I I haven't tried a trend blade, and you could try a trend blade with a thicker curve in the cordless, but again, I've never needed needed to. Before I wrap this um, video up, I just wanted to talk a little bit about these squares. So these are um, from a guy called Frank FC Tools. Uh, they're made in Scotland. They are very, very well made. And basically, they attach to your rail to give you a very, very accurate 90 degree cut. So you butt the square up against the workpiece. And then you put your track saw onto the track. And then you just run it along and it will give you a bang on 90 degree cut off this edge. Um, this one I've had for a few years now. Um, I think this is one of the early versions. Um, I paid £165 for this. 
um, and it's been amazing. It's just changed the way I do stuff. It's just so much faster um, than marking both sides of the board because literally that's all you got to do is take your tape measure, hook it on your workpiece, mark it on the front edge, butt it up, and when you cut it, it will be bang on square. And I have checked it a few times to see if it is square, and it is bang on. Um, and very, I was very lucky that enough Frank sent me this one down to test a couple of weeks ago and this is the upgraded version and this is the hybrid square so this works on the Dewalt rails and the Fez tool rails um, he also does the rails squares for the Bosch and the Marfell saws as well all the brands uh, like I said I've got a Dewalt one so I need the Dewalt ones but this is the hybrid that works on both um, it is amazing like I said Again, this one stays in a workshop and this one comes out on site to me. And it's so all you've got to do with the D1. You've got to cut away the small bit of rubber so the square goes on. And then you just use an Allen key, which is supplied, that just clip, um, just tighten up against the rail. So if, if you imagine this is your workpiece, this is your workpiece, and you want to take a measurement from there to there, say 400 mil, you just line it up on it. This butts up against the edge. You can use your track saw. Just get my cordless one. You get your cordless or any track saw, sorry, not just cordless, and it just runs along and it cuts it um, bang on square. So, um, lay, lay it about 160, 180 quid, and it says it's about 220 pound at the moment. But it's well worth the investment. If you've got loads of cutting to do and you haven't got um, a panel saw or a table saw, then this is definitely going to speed up the process. So I just wanted to mention that. So just to finish off, do I think you need a track saw? Definitely yes. It's a big investment, but it's definitely worth it. And like I said, you can get so many accessories for them now that if you've got a small workshop like myself or you're a site carpenter or whatever, or even if you're a hobbyist, this is definitely going to improve your work quality. Um, do you need to buy the Dewalt one over every other make? No, not really. Uh, they do have some benefits. Like I said, the power of the cordless one is fantastic. I know a few other brands got a cordless one out, but this is definitely the most powerful one out on the market. And if you are on the Dewalt platform, then why wouldn't you choose Dewalt? Um, regarding the, co the corded one, I haven't heard any bad reviews about other machines about them being more powerful, less powerful. If it's 240, then it's going to have quite a lot of power. The 110 versions are going to have less power, but that's that's obvious. Um, I wouldn't buy any other brand. I'm a big Dewalt fan and all my tools are Dewalt. So if these two break today or tomorrow, hopefully don't, obviously. But I would just go out and buy another Dewalt one. There's no reason why I wouldn't buy one. I've been using it for so many years and I'm so happy with the quality of cut and the way they perform. They are really well-built tools. So I would just go out and buy another Dewalt one. The benefits of buying these ones over other brands in regards to the price is the tracks are slightly cheaper. And like I said, the blades, the reason why Fez tool are so good is the blades are very, very good quality, um, but they are more expensive. You can probably buy two Dewalt blades or two Trend blades for the price of one um, Fez tool blade. Um, but I don't really know what more to say about them. I love them. I got nothing really to compare them with. Um, but if you ask me, would, would you recommend the Dewalt one? Then yes, I would recommend it. So I'm just going to wrap this up now. Thank you so much for Alistair for um, asking me to do this. Really appreciate it. Go and check out his page. He's a fantastic guy. He does some amazing work and really knowledgeable about what we do. And also Peter Millard as well. Um, go and check out his page. He's got a massive following and he goes into great depth about these tools and probably does a better review than me on them. So cheers, guy. and guys. And I hope you um, enjoyed this episode. And if you like it, give it a, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers.